Why News with Angelo Castro III, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. A transport group sets to petition for a 2 peso fare increase. A consumer group, on the other hand, wants President Rodrigo Duterte to appoint a price czar. Here's why from Monoxon. The energy department and oil companies have agreed to have the implementation of the price increase of oil products on January 15. Prices of gasoline and diesel will increase by around 3 pesos, while the price of kerosene will go up by more than 3 pesos. An 11-kilogram tank of LPG, on the other hand, will increase by 12 pesos. The change on the date will ensure that gasoline stations have already dispensed with their old stocks and will only sell new supplies when the price hike takes effect. The DOE says the excise tax will only have an effect on new imports and not on old stocks. DOE explains that gasoline stations replenish their supplies every 15 days enough time to have old stocks sold out and replaced with new supplies. Pag naubos na, that's the only uh, point where pwede na siyang uh, mag-increase dun sa, sa excise tax. The oil companies have also submitted the list of their inventory to the DOE to ensure that they will have their old stocks sold out first and will post new prices for the public to see. The DOE has formed a task force that will monitor oil prices and will conduct regular inspection to refineries and gasoline stations. Oil companies who will violate the agreement will be fined. Meanwhile, a transport group will appeal to the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board for a 2 peso fare increase in Jeepney because of the impending price increase of petroleum products. Stop and Go Coalition says this will affect all Jeepney drivers. Alam mo, kulang pa yan eh. Kaya lang, uh, marami pa kasi yung problema ang haharapin. Ano? Tsaka marami na masigurong grupo na magpapail ng petisyon. The transport group is also concerned that prices of spare parts will also increase. Meanwhile, a consumer group sets to appeal to President Rodrigo Duterte to appoint a price czar. Laban Consumer Group President Vic Dimagiba says this is a way to protect the rights of the consumers. Someone should be looking at the entire supply chain. Nansa ganon organisado and that the process is fair, just and good for the benefit of the consumers. Dimagiba adds that the prize czar must be a high-ranking official from the executive branch who can have the upper hand over other government agencies and price regulators with regard to the train act. The consumer group says the prize czar must dedicate a hotline that consumers can call for any abuse or excessive price increases in the market. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The management of Grab Philippines and Philippine National Taxi Operators Association will file a petition for a fair increase before the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board. Here's why from Joan Nano. The Grab Philippines and the Philippine National Taxi Operators Association are now preparing to file a petition for a 6 to 10 percent increase in their fare rates. The plan comes following the expected increase in the prices of petroleum products due to the tax reform law. For example, a passenger from Magallanes, Makati City going to Green Hills normally pays 150 to 170 pesos when riding Grab Car. But when the petition gets approval, Grab Car fares will go up by 10 to 13 pesos. Grab explains if they will not seek for a fare hike, their drivers may prefer to seek for a new job. It will then affect the supply and demand of Transport Network Vehicles or TNVS. If a fare adjustment is not made, this would put in question their their income uh, on a monthly basis and thus further potentially reduce the number of TNBS vehicles uh, plying the streets uh, because they would be forced to find uh, other, other jobs that are, that are better um, paying. Aside from the prices of petroleum products, Grab Philippines says it is also expecting an increase in the prices of spare parts and other expenses. Rolando Macandili is among the Grab drivers who worry over the train law that is expected to affect their livelihood. Okay, malaki ang epekto. Sana taasan din yung fare, yung pamasahe para medyo balance yung, yung take-home pay namin. 
pambaho na rin ng mga bata. <laughs> the Philippine National Taxi Operators Association or Pintoa will also appeal for a fair hike to the LTFRB. The group of taxi operators will ask the LTFRB to increase taxi cabs' flagdown rate from 40 pesos to 50 pesos. According to Pintoa President Attorney Bong Suntai, taxi operators and their drivers are suffering from huge revenue losses due to the high prices of gasoline, traffic congestion, and intense competition with DNVS. Sabi nga namin, yung industriya namin, eh, kung hindi nila gagawin, uh, gagawin reasonably naman yung pasahe, talagang tuluyan ang mamamatay dahil wala nang kinikita talaga yung mga driver. Mm -hmm. Dahil walang kinikita yung driver, wala nang gusto maglabas ng taxi. Ang operator, eh, hindi uh, nalulugi na rin. Some passengers, meanwhile, believe the fare increase being sought for by some transport group is reasonable. Okay lang naman siguro yun. Pero wag naman siguro ganong kataas yung increase nila. Okay lang, I guess. Kasi pagtataas din naman yung mga jeep, magdadaman sila lahat, magdadaman. As if may magagawa tayo, di ba? Grab plans to file their petition anytime this week, while Pintoa will hold a dialogue first with LTFRB before submitting their petition next week. Joan Ano, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. The Armed Forces of the Philippines returns to offensive mode as the holiday season ends. Here's why from Lea Ilagan. The leadership of the Armed Forces of the Philippines orders the resumption of the offensive military operations against the rebel group New People's Army or NPA. According to AFP Chief of Staff General Ray Leonardo Guerrero, the suspensions of military offensive or SOMO declared by the Executive Department for the holiday season has been lifted yesterday. With this, the military will resume its operations against the NPA. Effective January 2, diba? uh, 6 p.m., uh, lifted the ceasefire. So uh, we have already instructed yung mga units natin to resume yung ating uh, offensive military operations. So this is uh, nationwide, not only for Mindanao. General Guerrero says the AFP already reported to President Rodrigo Duterte the violations committed by the NPA during the ceasefire period. It can be recalled the rebel group committed series of attacks last holiday season. Guerrero, however, notes the president has yet to respond to their report. We have reported uh, uh, at least two, but uh, there were others uh, in other places also. Uh, mga siguro mga four. In line with this, the general vows the military would prioritize efforts to suppress insurgency in the country. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Aguinaldo. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice is set to file before the Supreme Court its petition seeking to officially declare the CPP-NPA as a terrorist group. Here's why from Aiko Miguel. The Department of Justice is about to complete within the month the petition it will file before the Supreme Court to officially declare the Communist Party of the Philippines, New People's Army or CPP-NPA, a terrorist group. In accordance with the provision of the Republic Act 9372 or the Human Security Act, according to Senior Assistant State Prosecutor Peter Ong, the DOJ is just waiting for other evidence they will incorporate in the said petition. Perhaps within the month, kaya na to. Kasi because of the so many incidents, I'm still waiting for the reports to come in, certified two copies of the reports. It can be recalled Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea ordered the DOJ to file a petition before the High Tribunal to declare the communist as a terrorist group. This after President Rodrigo Duterte verbally proclaimed last December 5, 2017, the CPP-NPA as such. Ong argues they have strong evidence against the communist, noting they have recorded more than 10 cases of attacks committed by the CPP and PA during the term of the Duterte administration. The lastest attack, Ong says, was the rebels' ambush of government troops during a rescue operation in Katubig Northern Samar after the onslaught of Typhoon Urduha. He notes they have also received similar reports of attacks from the local prosecution office. We were able to gather incidents of their we call it atrocities, they call it tactical offensive, whatever that is, that incidents of the terrorist acts or terrorist activities nila. But I wanted to focus on incidents. Ong, meanwhile, clarifies that the National Democratic Front of the Philippines, or NDFP, will not be declared as a terrorist group. 
He says many of their reports come from Surigao del Norte. They also have with them the names of the CPP NPA's alleged commander of platoons and their Lumad platoon. Yun pong pinipetition natin, hindi po si Joma ang magiging terrorist pa, kundi yung organization. So in my prayer dito sa petition, actually sa title pa lang, a uh, petition to declare the Communist Party of the Philippines and the New People's Army as terrorist organizations, associations, and all group of persons. I'm not focusing on the individuals. Although I made mention the names, their names, kasi sila yung mga officers ng CPP at saka NP. The DOJ has yet to determine the court where to file the petition, especially now that there are alleged attacks happening in various areas of the country. DOJ's partner in creating the petition are various government agencies like DNBI, AFP, and PNP. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. President Rodrigo Duterte defers his planned dismissal of a government official. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Even before year 2018 started, President Rodrigo Duterte has told Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque about the next presidential appointee he wants to be dismissed. Roque says he planned to make the official announcement today. However, the chief executive told him not to proceed with the announcement. So although I was directed to announce as early as, thir as January 30, the instruction was to announce in our next press briefing, which is today. But of course, at the beginning of the day, I was asked to um, defer with the said announcement. Malacanang did not cite any reason behind the deferment of the dismissal of the unnamed official. At present, the president is studying the law that created the agency which the said official is appointed. Roque also clarifies that he wasn't referring to either official of Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office or the Maritime Industry Authority. The PCSO official is facing controversy over the alleged extravagant party for employees that was held last December. The Marina administrator, on the other hand, is alleged of engaging in junkets. I can Just make the confirmation the that the the official who I was tasked to announce and they belatedly told to hold in abeyance is not from the PCSO. Meanwhile, Malacanang once again reiterated that President Duterte does not allow any of his relatives to be involved in any government transaction. That applies to his children, his siblings, his cousins, his uncles and aunts. No one in his family is authorized by him to have any financial interest in any government office, agency, or department. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. The Bureau of Internal Revenue, or BIR, releases the revised withholding tax table in relation to the government's tax reform law. However, Bayan Muna Party List Representative Carlos Zarate says a petition against train is now being crafted. My Bermudez tells us why. Under the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion or Train Law, those who are earning lower than 20,833 pesos per month or 200,000 pesos a year are now exempted from paying income tax. In relation to the new law, the Bureau of Internal Revenue released a revised withholding tax table. There are four modes of payment between an employer and an employee. Daily, weekly, semi-monthly, or every 15th and 30th of the month, and monthly. So, ang 25,000 po is nasa column 3. Ang 16,667, ang tax po niya, ang buwis niya, is katumbas na ng 1,250. Anything in excess ng 16,667 is bubuwisan ng payroll master ng 25% dun sa excess. The Bureau of Internal Revenue, however, clarifies that the old taxation law will still be the basis for the filing of the income tax return on April 15. So yun pong ifa-file na annual income tax return ng ating taxpayer sa April 15, uh, 2018 refers to taxable year 2017. The revised withholding tax table is already uploaded in the website of the agency at bir.gov.ph. Public consultations are also set on January 11 and 12 to explain the new law to taxpayers. Meantime, Bayan Muna is set to question the tax reform law before the Supreme Court.
The group stresses that proper process was not followed in the passage of the law. They are currently preparing the petition that they will submit to the High Court. Bayan Muna Party List Representative Carlos Zarate insists that the new law is not needed for tax collection. Napakarami na nating pinapasang buwis. Pero sa katotohanan, uh, hindi pa rin fully nakukolekta ng uh, mga ehensyang ito ang mga buwis na dapat nilang kolektahin. No? Lalong-lalo na yung mga buwis ng mga uh, malalaking uh, taxpayers. Meanwhile, the BIR welcomes the challenge of intensifying their collection efficiency. I agree with the uh, Congressman Sarate that we really have to work all the time, double time. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. And in other news, the Philippines may possibly open the playing field for telecommunications providers to other foreign companies. Here's why from Rosalie Cox. Malacanang says that it is not yet final if the third telecommunications company to be joining the country's playing field will be coming from China. This despite the fact that President Rodrigo Duterte offered this to Chinese Prime Minister Li Keqiang when the Chinese official visited the country. Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque says if Chinese telecom will not heed with a 60-40% constitutional foreign ownership provision, the Philippines will open the market to other foreign companies. We gave China the option, but if this is not acceptable to it, Unfortunately, we will have to look for other players because we will have to honor what the Constitution provides, 60-40 in terms of um, owning a telecoms company. Roque, however, says they do not see any indication that China will not push through with the project. President Duterte is determined to implement the project the soonest possible time to create better competition and better telecommunication service for the public. So far, as, as far as I know, it has been offered to China we don't know what the details are, but the deadline is fast um, approaching. The president wants it up and about in the first quarter of this year. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. The Armed Forces of the Philippines and the National Capital Region Police Office are now readying the security measures they will implement in Quiapo, Manila next week. Here's why from Lea Ilagat. The Armed Forces of the Philippines Joint Task Force, NCR, will deploy 500 personnel on Tuesday for the translation in Quiapo, Manila. The new commander of the AFP, NCR, says the National Capital Region Police Office, or NCRPO, will help them in maintaining peace and security in Quiapo. This is to ensure the safety of thousands of individuals expected to attend the yearly procession. Brigadier General Alan Alojado says the military has not received any security threat in line with the upcoming occasion on Tuesday. Uh, except for uh, usual uh, criminality and other uh, threats, so uh, in my uh, capacity as the new chief, wala pa namang nakarating. Unless uh, kung meron man, then we will be prepared for it. The more than 4,000 personnel of the NCRPO who will be deployed on Tuesday will also remain on full alert status. Hindi tayo pwedeng mag-relax dyan. Ang madideploy natin mga polis dyan na uh, I'm sure more than 4,000. We'll be occupying yung mga high, uh, uh, high rise buildings para ma makita natin no, yung mga kababayan natin habang sila ay uh, nagmamarcha. In line with this, the NCRPO recommends to Philippine National Police Chief, Police Deputy Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa, the suspension of the permit to carry firearms outside of residence in the city of Manila. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. The Manila Police District will deploy around 6,000 police personnel in the Traslacion 2018. Meanwhile, organizers decide to slightly change the route of the Traslacion. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Manila Police District ensures its readiness in guaranteeing peace and order during the Traslacion 2018 that will take place on Tuesday, January 9. MPD officials made rounds earlier to check the security measures that were laid down in the possible obstruction of the intended route. As part of their security plan, police authorities will restrict the use of black bags or any black plastic bags. Five to six thousand po ang uh, nakadeploy ng uh, MPD personnel po during translation 2018 po. 
binabawal po o pinakikiusapan po ang mga tao na magdala noong uh, kulay itim na ano po, yung parang uh, waste basket po. Dapat po yan transparent. Ayaw namin at dinidisregard namin yung pagdadala na ang kulay itim kasi po hindi po natin makikita kung ano pong nakalaman. Changes are also made in the route that the transaction will take to avoid heavy traffic and to have more space for those who will participate. To ensure a more safer route, dahil nga po hindi na tayo dadaan ng lagos nila at saka yun mo nga clover leaf from City Hall to Post Office. So may dalawang tulay po tayong may iwasan. Makamakatulong din po ito para sa pagpapabilis ng posisyon. Even the Department of Public Works and Highways or DPWH has started checking the roads to guarantee that it is a better route. We are now using the westbound lane. Maganda rin naman yung layunin nila kung bakit natin din na-divert. It is because na para lang maging mas maluwag yung dadaanan ng procession. Kasi nga, niwasan natin yung lagos nila, which is only two lane, tsaka yung flyover na two lane din. After conducting consultation meetings with different intelligence units in the NCR, the MPD also ensures that they have enough personnel who will manage and protect the millions of Filipinos who will join the transaction. Wala pa po tayo na mamonitor na anumang banda, pero we will take all the necessary measures to prevent any untoward incident. On Friday, January 5, the MPD will make a public announcement of the final plan of the Trasasyon 2018 and the final rerouting plan of vehicles. Authorities advise those with health issues, pregnant women and children to no longer participate in the said event for their own security and protection. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources vows to apprehend local governments violating laws on proper waste segregation. The Philippine National Police probes on possible inside job in the hotel robbery incident in Pasay City. And Tropical Cyclone Agaton exits the Philippine area of responsibility. Why News will be right back. of Environment and Natural Resources, or DNR, will go after local government officials who will not implement proper waste segregation and management plan. Here's why from Abby Santa Ines. Local government officials will be held liable if they will not implement the Republic Act 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000. According to the DNR Solid Waste Management Division, officials from the barangays, cities, and municipalities are liable in implementing the waste segregation and waste management plan in their jurisdiction. In fact, the department has already filed complaint charges against 50 local government officials at the office of the ombudsman. Napailan po sila ng kaso at ang magandang balita, out of 50 na napail na kaso, 38 po yung tumali, may ibig sabihin, nag-comply. So ibig sabihin, very effective yun. Offending officials may face civil, administrative, and criminal charges for this. Sabi natin, pag civil case, pwede ma-demote, pwede ma-suspende. Administrative case, pwede po silang mapatawa ng parusa, yung sinatawag natin na perpetual disqualification. At criminal, siyempre makukulong. The law also covers proper waste collection and disposal. The department also warns about open burning in accordance with Republic Act 8749 or the Philippine Clean Air Act of 1999. Violators will be meted out with 300 to 1,000 pesos as fines or community service of not more than 15 days. Maraming tao walang disiplina kaya kailangan yung batas. Kailangan yung kamay na bakal ng batas. Yes, yeah, napakahalaga yun kasi ang tao kailangan takutin eh. Kailangan na bigyan ng, ng disiplina. In Metro Manila alone, the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA has collected 48 trucks of garbage on day 1 of 2018. Abi Santaynes, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. 
The Commission on Elections or Comelec Region 11 will conduct public hearings in line with the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan polls this May. Here's why from Grace Kasi. More than 1 million and 200 regular voters in the entire region of Daba will participate in the village and Sangguniang Kabataan elections in May. This is if the said polls will push through on the 14th of May of this year. However, there remains uncertainty regarding the conduct of elections in Mindanao due to the existing martial law in the region. Because of this, the Commission on Elections or Comelec Region 11 will hold public hearings to determine the sentiment of the public regarding the matter. So ngayon, baka na iba na yung sentiments ng mga publiko, baka gusto nila ituloy na despite the declaration of martial law, then we will continue with our elections this May. Although there remains uncertainty if the said elections will push through in May, the poll body is still preparing for it. Now we are uh, clustering the precincts. By next month, we will be having our uh, Board of Election Tellers composition. It was in October 2017 when President Rodrigo Duterte approved the second postponement of the SK and Village polls. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Political analysts and law experts believe that the provision that establishes a substate will be a contentious issue in the passage of the Bangsamoro Basic Law. Here's why from Nel Maribuho. Two proposed bills regarding the passage of the Bangsamoro Basic Law are now up for deliberation in the Senate. One of them is the proposed version of Senate President Aquilino Pimenta III. According to Professor Ramon Casiple, a political analyst, the concept of a sub-state or shared country sovereignty will be a contentious issue in the passage of the bill. Pimentel's version states that the proposed autonomous region basic law gives the Bangsamoro regional government exclusive powers. These include matters on agriculture, contract loans, trade, investment, labor, employment, tourism, budgeting, establishment of own government-owned and or controlled corporations or GOCC and other financial institutions and others. According to law expert attorney George Irwin Garcia, this is one of the provisions which lawmakers should look into as to its constitutionality, particularly regarding the Philippines' sovereignty. Because if a, if a certain part of a state or territory can manage its own affairs, can conduct relations with even other states, can uh, implement its own law, whether criminal, civil, or whatever law within their territory, then it is already independent. Even President Rodrigo Duterte had earlier expressed concern over some provisions of the BBL that may be in contradiction to what the Constitution states. Senate Committee on Local Government Chairperson Senator Sani Angara, however, assures that the BBL will be within the bounds of the Constitution as it was drafted after thorough consultations and debates. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. The Pasay City Police believes that robbery, the robbery at a hotel in Pasay City yesterday was an inside job. Roger Adora will tell us why. The Philippine National Police or PNP has now a lead in a robbery incident at a hotel in Pasay City yesterday. Five suspects took 3 million peso worth of cash and gadgets. The PNP made the announcement after watching the footages from a CCTV inside and outside of the hotel. According to the police, the guard of the hotel was texting and seemed anxious several hours before the crime was committed. Hawak-hawak na yung kanyang cellphone, nagte-text at uh, medyo palingalinga doon sa mga guests, pati na rin sa, sa kabuuan ng hotel mismo. At uh, maya-maya lalabas ito, uh, Sige pa rin ang text niya hanggang sa dumating na yung mga suspects. With this, the police believe the suspects have accomplices within the hotel. Maliwanag sa atin na maaaring meron silang kausap sa loob. Aside from this, the PNP also discovered that the hotel management had not yet remitted the revenue during the holiday season. Last night, PNP Chief PDG Ronald De La Rosa and NCRPO Director Oscar Albayalde conducted an inspection at the said hotel. Earlier today, the Southern Police District and the hotel management held the meeting. We're here to really give the full support 
the cooperation to the incident no as far as yung directives ng ating uh, general uh, bato at uh, we can say that we are really in full cooperation the pnp also noticed the lack of security at the said establishment mukhang uh, kulang yung kanilang uh, security guard uh, at the same time yung inspection na ni chief pnp kagabi nakita nga na uh, Yung security guard, uh, short firearms lang, tapos kulang sa, sa bala. So dun sa usapan namin ngayon with the hotel management at saka yung security agency, uh, naayos na namin uh, mag-upgrade mag, uh, mag na ng security. Authorities are in search for the suspects. Roger Ladora, UNTV News Rescue, Philippines. An inmate in Tanawan City Jail has lost his chance to liberty after a recent police operation inside the facility. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. A prisoner in the facility of the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology or BJMP in Tanawan City will face new charges after he was caught using illegal drugs inside the comfort room of his jail cell. The suspect is identified as Jonathan Navarrete, who was supposed to walk away a free man this year. Jail authorities confiscated from him a sachet of suspected jabu, drug parapernalia, and a lighter. We will do a, another investigation for that para matrack down natin kung kanino talaga nanggaling yung items na nakita natin. In Butuan City, a suspect surrenders while four others were arrested over the murder of a man at a bar in J.C. Aquino Avenue over the weekend. The suspects are facing murder charges and now detained at the Butuan City Police Office. Because of the kwan, yung, uh, conspiracy theory na kung yung uh, one is the act of all eh, nangyari eh, na matay itong suspect, the murder talaga. Eh, depende na yan sa depensa kung paano ma-resolve yung case. But definitely sa atin, yung nakikita natin, we file eh, the same case to uh, of the five suspects. After the said incident, the Butuan police increased police visibility in the city. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Veteran singer Freddy Aguilar has lost millions worth of property last night. Here's why from Monokson. A fire engulfed the home of Filipino music icon and hitmaker Freddy Aguilar along the Avery Street North Fairview Park Subdivision in Quezon City last night. According to the Bureau of Fire Protection, the blaze broke out at 11.04 in the evening at the ceiling of his music room. It immediately spread since the room was made with light materials and the house was already old. May probability na mayroon sigurong uh, overloading or uh, may na ano sa electrical wiring nila sa siguro may, dahil medyo matagal na to. The music icon narrates he was at a bar when his child called to tell him that their house was on flame. Aguilar's family was not hurt in the incident, including his one-month pregnant wife, Jovi. Jovi says she exited from their balcony and jumped from the roof of their neighbor. Tumisigaw ko ng hagdan or anything walang hagdan na makuha ang tagal pa. Tapos umakit na lang ako dun sa taas. Sabi ko yung hagdan dun dalhin. Tapos yung kapitbahay namin dyan, nag nagdala siya ng hagdan. Mababa nga lang yung hagdan. Eh pag tawid-tawid ko dun, hindi, ko, hindi pa rin abot yung hagdan. So tumalo na lang ako. Firemen immediately contained the fire after 30 minutes. Although the fire reached only first alarm, it destroyed millions of worth of properties. Nung itinayo ko yung bahay pa lang, 13, 14 million yun, lahat, lahat. So wala pa yung laman nun. Based on the figures of the Bureau of Fire Protection from January to December 29, 2017, the number of fire incidents involving residential homes dropped by 14% in the said year. Majority of fire incidents were caused by faulty electrical connection. With this, the BFP reminds the public to immediately fix their homes when it has a leak and their electricity lines to avoid fire. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Meanwhile, residents of Palawan affected by the onslaught of tropical depression Agaton are asking for aid from the local government. Here's why from Ray Pelayo. Heavy rains have stopped in Puerto Princesa City, but the skies remains dark a day after Tropical Depression Agaton hit the province of Palawan. Following the damages it caused, more than 1,000 residents affected by the cyclone in the province are asking for aid from the local government. 
The depression hit about 11 municipalities, particularly in towns of Rojas, Araceli, Dumaran, Aborlan, Mangsi Island, Balabac, Palawan, and Puerto Princesa City. According to some residents living in coastal areas, at around 7 in the evening yesterday, they evacuated from their homes as the water from the sea rose. Many of the evacuees are severely affected. This is why they are asking for help from the government. Mahala Pangulo, sana matulungan mo rin yung mga, mga coastal area na nabigyan kami ng tahanan na uh, matibay na hindi na kami matatakot. Based on the initial figures of the Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office or PDRRMO, a tropical cyclone damaged 25 homes while three of the houses were totally destroyed. Boats in some municipalities were also damaged due to the strong waves and winds. According to the provincial government, they continue to help the residents affected by Agaton. Pero doon sa ating mga kababayan na nandoon pa sa evacuation, we have to provide food. Uh, para naman uh, hindi mo na sila bumalik kung talagang in danger pa yung kanilang community. There have been no reported injuries of casualties due to tropical cyclone Agaton. Meanwhile, some families have already returned to their homes as the weather in the province improves. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Residents of Cebu City affected by the recent storms continue to receive aid from the provincial government. Here's why from Abi Santa Ines. The southern part of the province of Cebu has been affected by the heavy rains brought by the typhoon that hit the area. In response to the impact of the calamity, local officials distribute relief goods to the affected residents. The provincial government will also provide bureau assistance to the relatives of the casualties due to Typhoon Agaton. Tunay kuyog sila karon dito nga taga PSWD to process sa mga document dokumento ay mohatag si mohatag ta og bureau assistance nga 10,000. Kada, kada, kada patay. According to Julius Regner of the Cebu Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office, about 800 to 900 families have evacuated from their homes. The provincial government of Cebu continues to assess the total amount of damages caused by Typhoon Vinta. When I compare nila ang Ordoha and Agaton, uh, ang ako, mas, kus, mas dako ang impact to ang Ordoha and Vinta. No? Well, sa karam, ang kuan ng karam kayo na matiyan mo. Cebu Governor Hilario Davide III visited today the affected areas to check on the condition of the affected residents. Abi Santaynes, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Coming up on Y News. The United States faces a deadly cold snap as record-breaking temperature is expected to worsen in the coming days. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un reopens border hotline with South Korea. And the Philippine Bible Society encourages the public to read the Bible in line with the National Bible Month. More from Y News after this break. The Philippine Bible Society encourages the public to read the Bible in the celebration of the National Bible Month. Grace Cassin tells us why. Janine is a member of Bible Reader Society International or BREAD for four years now. BREAD is a group that encourages youth to read the Bible. Janine says she noticed changes in her life since she learned to read the Bible. Dati po, um, mahilig po ako magbasa ng pocket books. Then, nung naging member po ako ng Bread Society, natutunan ko po magbasa ng Biblia. Under Presidential Proclamation No. 124, signed by President Rodrigo Duterte, the National Bible Month will be celebrated in the whole month of January. Based on the research conducted by the Philippine Bible Society, 55% of families in the country have no Bible. This is why Philippine Bible Society Secretary General Nora Lucero urges the public and government officials to take time to read the Bible. Sa dami ng ating mga kinaharap na hamon ano, bilang isang bayan, sana ang salita ng Diyos ay maging patnubay. The Bible Reader Society International was formed in 1998. The group aims at encouraging the youth to stay away from vices and take time to read the Bible. Sa mga Korean movies, sa mga Facebook, mabaga ang dami po nating oras. Siguro yung limang minuto or ten minutes na makapagbasa po tayo ng Biblia, 
marami na po tayong matututunan at the same time ma ma-apply po ng mga mabubuting paggawa po. In one episode of Ang Dating Daan or The Old Path, Brother Eli Soriano of Memories Church of God International has said that the Bible is a legacy of the God to mankind. Yung sulat love letter ng lumiligaw sa'yo o yung nililigawan mo, kinakabisado mo yun eh. Ang Biblia ay parang isang love letter ng Diyos sa kanyang mga anak. Nandyan ang kanyang pagmamahal, pagkalinga, pag-ibig, mga pangako, mga ipamamana. Nandyan lahat sa Biblia. Meanwhile, the Members Church of God International or MCGI gives away 300 copies of the Bible to Provincial Library of Cavite. In behalf of uh, the provincial government of Cavite, maraming maraming salamat. At makakatulong po ito sa mga bumibisita po sa ating provincial library. Ito ay sublubhang napakahalaga at napapanahon, lalong-lalo na sa National Bible Man. Grace Cassid, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. So those are the reasons behind the news, January 3, 2018. Amang Hilo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know. We will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why, why News. news.